A certified underwater assassin, the Russian VA-111 Shukvar is a serious force to be reckoned with and is reportedly the fastest torpedo on Earth. Designed to be so fast that the enemy doesn't even have time to deploy countermeasures, it's one of the most unique weapons in modern Russia's arsenal. Join us today as we explore the history and design of this innovative and deadly invention. As with most Russian inventions on this channel, our story begins at the height of the Cold War, because of course it does, with the Soviets designing weapons in case of a full-scale conflict with NATO. In this case, the goal was to find a way to counter the threat posed by American submarines. Especially in the 1960s and 70s, much of the USSR's nuclear deterrent was in its submarine fleet, able to lie low in the oceans around the world and emerge in an instant to launch their payload. Now, this sounds great, but the Soviets also knew that the moment conflict broke out, the United States would place high priority in sinking Soviet submarines before they could achieve any of this, and likewise, the USSR would begin hunting down American subs, with each side hoping to eliminate nuclear warheads before they could be launched. Both sides would be employing torpedoes in such a scenario. However, the US was in the lead in the nuclear propulsion sector, so they were likely going to have the advantage. So, unable to compete on that front, some higher ups in the USSR started realizing that the best chance for the Soviets to level the playing fields in this global underwater duel was by developing the world's deadliest torpedoes. Now, torpedoes had been in use for decades at this point and were already known to be a key part of naval warfare. It was only through the use of nearly 20 torpedoes during World War II that the US was able to sink Japan's mighty Yamato, who, along with her sister ship, was the heaviest battleship ever constructed. Today's sponsor is Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. With Squarespace, you can stand out with a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and even sell anything you want. Your products, the content you create, and yeah, even your time. Now, let me tell you about some of the awesome features that Squarespace has to offer. First up, we have the Fluid Engine. It's like a magical toolbox that unlocks unbreakable creativity. With Fluid Engine, you start with a top-notch website template, and then using their reimagined drag-and-drop technology, you can customize every design detail to fit your vision. Whether you're on a desktop or mobile, this feature will stretch your imagination and make your site truly unique. I mean, who doesn't want their website to stand out from the crowd? Right. Well, next, let's talk about Squarespace extensions. It's like having your very own toolbox full of incredible tools to extend the functionality of your website. You can connect your store to vetted third-party tools that will supercharge your site and take it to the next level. Whether you need advanced analytics, booking systems, or even social media integrations, Squarespace extensions have got your back. Another feature that I love is the email campaigns. This tool allows you to drive sales and engage your audience in a whole new way. So, you ready to take your online presence to the next level? Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial and see for yourself why so many creators and businesses choose Squarespace. And when you're ready to launch, don't forget to go to squarespace.com slash megaprojects to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain when you use the promo code megaprojects. So what are you waiting for? Get started with today's sponsor, Squarespace, through the link below. And now back to today's video. But over the years, several defenses for torpedoes began to enter service. These countermeasures include decoys aimed at stealing the torpedo's attention, defensive torpedoes that intercept the incoming one, and even acoustic weapons known as maskers, all which make so much noise that it makes it difficult for enemy sonar to find the target. But the USSR believed that at least some of these problems could be mitigated through new inventions. So sometime in the early 1960s, an order was given to the Research Institute of Applied Hydrodynamics to create a new and unstoppable submarine killer. Now, there isn't a lot of detailed information about its development, as almost nothing was known of this until the end of the Cold War. But the Shukval turned out to be just what the Soviets had been looking for. Able to be launched from standard torpedo tubes, the Shukval has a rather unassuming appearance. It doesn't look like a superweapon, but looks can be deceiving, as this is the fastest torpedo in the world. The first step in increasing the Shukval's speed was to swap out the traditional propeller for solid fuel rocket propulsion. In the sky, this works absolute wonders and speed increases dramatically. Unfortunately, underwater, the effect is much harder to achieve because of the resistance imposed by water. This drag is why torpedoes, despite their killer reputation, are generally more of a slow and steady type of invention. 
The engineers in charge of the Shukval were sick of being the tortoise, and they found a sneaky way to become the hare. Now, on the nose of the torpedo, there's a little metal cone that looks like three separate domes stacked on top of each other with a rather flat, circular tip. This right here is the key to the Shukval's innovation, a concept known as supercavitation. Essentially, supercavitation is the creation of an air bubble around a submerged object in order to reduce contact with the water surrounding it. When contact with water is reduced, well, so is drag, and so the object is able to accelerate and maintain higher speeds than would normally be possible underwater, as it's essentially cruising through the air. The way this is achieved on the Shukval is through the special shape of that peculiar nose cone, as a well, there's a small turbine within it, both of which divert water around the torpedo, minimizing overall friction. This is aided by the release of high-pressure gas from the nose cone as well, further pushing water away from the torpedo as it moves. So after launching from the torpedo tube, the Shukval solid fuel accelerates it to a cruising speed of around 200 knots, which is equivalent to about 370 kilometers per hour, or about 230 miles per hour. There are claims that even faster variants have been both designed and tested, but this has yet to be confirmed. Even on the lower estimates of speed, this is still incredibly fast for a torpedo. It is actually around four times faster than the Mark 42 carried by modern US submarines. After the torpedo is finished accelerating, speed is maintained via an underwater ramjet. And although steering is difficult, slight turns can be made through the use of four fins near the back end of the torpedo. These fins naturally sit just on the edge of the supercavitating bubble, and so when needed, two of the four fins can extend just a tiny bit into the water and allow the torpedo to maneuver. But steering is not exactly reliable, so course corrections are only minimal. And the nature and speed of the torpedo means that it's so loud it actually would deafen any internal sonar used for navigation. Instead, the torpedo navigates using inertial navigation and calculates its position relative to its launch point. Originally, this lack of steering wasn't even a remote concern, as the torpedo only needed to detonate somewhere near the enemy in order to achieve its goal. The first reason is due to its rather short range of just 15 kilometers. The other, more absurd reason is because when it was first designed, it was actually intended to carry nuclear warheads. As a sort of revenge weapon, if the crew detected an incoming torpedo, the Shukful could be fired back along this same trajectory, taking a nuke right back to whoever fired first. The prototype Shukvall was completed in 1964 and was tested in a liar-fire exercise, obviously without the warhead, in the Black Sea off of the coast of Crimea. But the test failed. The engineers went back to the drawing board, made some improvements, and tried again, and failed again. It wasn't until the 6th edition that the test was successful and production finally began entering the Soviet inventory in 1977. While it may sound like the supercavitating Shukval was a leap of innovation in the torpedo world, its service history has seen little more than it just sitting in storage. This is likely due to the fact that the USSR's biggest war after its invention was in Afghanistan, which is a land war. There's no need for torpedoes. After the Soviet Union's collapse, Russia naturally inherited the technology and began working to make a modernized version. The first step was the rather smart decision to replace the nuclear warhead with a conventional one, which was completed sometime around 1995. Live firing tests were conducted with the modern non-nuclear Shukval in 1998 by the Russian Navy, and the weapon certainly caught the attention of many investors around the world. One American from Pennsylvania was so curious that he actually purchased classified documents relating to the torpedo in 2000 as part of his many business ventures in Russia, apparently hoping to use the technology for passenger ferries. Then the FSB arrested him for espionage, and he was only granted his release when Putin pardoned him after it was discovered that he was suffering from bone cancer. The US Navy was also intrigued by supercavitation, but not initially for use in torpedoes like in the Soviet Union. Instead, they were looking at ways to use it as a quick method of underwater transport, potentially for cargo transport across the world's oceans, but also for deploying Navy SEALs on hostile coastlines. If a supercavitating submarine could carry Navy SEALs, they could be sped right up into enemy territory, potentially fast enough to avoid defenses. However, after several billion dollars were invested into the program, funding was pulled largely because the sub would be too noisy, and just like with the Shukfall, it would be very, very difficult to steer. So, it seems that for the foreseeable future, the technology is going to remain purely on torpedoes. Germany designed its own version in the early 2000s, called the Supercavitator Render Unterwasserlaufkörper. Why? Why did I have to read that? 
better known as the Barracuda, and it supposedly reached speeds even faster than its Russian counterpart. However, it was doomed to forever remain a prototype, as only 12 were ever made, and it never entered production. The other nation that has designed their own supercapitating torpedo is Iran, who calls theirs the Hoot, or Whale. It's not quite as fast as the Shukvol, and most analysts are pretty sure that it was reverse engineered from the Russian version. Further, a less capable, somewhat dumbed down variant called the Shukvol E has been created for export sales. And while it's not 100% confirmed, US intelligence believes that Vietnam has purchased some of these after photos were circulated showing a shockful looking torpedo with Vietnamese labels on it and is suspected to be carried by Vietnam's Kilo class submarines. This is likely a move to beef up their naval defenses in the face of a potential conflict with China over disputes in the South China Sea. Like we said, the Shukvul, while its speed is impressive, well, that's about all it brings to the table. Navigation and steering are difficult, and the torpedo is so loud that there's a chance it gets spotted soon enough to be intercepted, and that's despite its speed. In fact, despite being touted as an aircraft carrier killer, its range is so short that the submarine would need to penetrate so deeply into carrier groups that they would be intercepted long before they could fire the magic bullet. This is why the US, despite pumping billions of dollars into it, largely abandoned supercapitation. But the technology feels too promising, and Russia isn't quite ready to let it go. So in recent years, there's been a bit of a resurgence in Russian interest, and additional funding was allocated to try and solve the problems facing the world's fastest torpedo. On the maneuverability front, there have reportedly been attempts to add thrust vectoring, which, if you're not familiar, is essentially manipulating the direction of the exhaust from the engine, allowing for better control. This technology is already used on highly maneuverable aircraft like the Russian Su-37 and the American F-22, so perhaps it could find a new use under the sea. Russia has also recently experimented with slowing down the torpedo once it nears the target, bringing it down to a more maneuverable speed so it can chase down its target in the final moments. These advancements have resulted in the creation of the creatively named Shukvul 2, the most modern version of the weapon. But that's not quite the end of the story today. The Russian Federation has recently started a program to replace the Shukvul entirely and improve it in every capacity, including speed, sound, range, and navigation. This new program is known as the Hishnik, which translated from Russian means raptor or predator. Now, normally Russia is quick to boast about their new superweapons, but in this case, there is next to nothing known about this torpedo as all the information remains highly classified. What we do know is that the contract for its design has already been awarded to Electro Preboard Design Bureau based in Saratov, a company that specializes in aviation and electronics. If the project continues as planned, in the coming years, uh, we'll see if the Shukvall successor turns out to be worth all the hype, or if it will ultimately turn out to be yet another interesting, but largely impractical piece of the Russian military. <laughs>